of two police officers leaving one in a critical condition. We'll have a briefing by the Deputy Inspector General of Police, the National Security Advisor, and the Minister for Interior. I now have the honor to invite the Deputy Inspector of General of the Gambia Police Force, Momodou Sow. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين إن لله وإن عليه راضون إن لله وإن عليه راضون Honorable Minister of the Interior, National Security Advisor of the Republic of the Gambia, colleagues, senior police officers here present, uh, the police senior management, the media fraternity here present, our press and uh, Public Relations Officer, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols duly and respectfully observed. You are all welcome to the this press briefing at the police headquarters here. I am Momodu Sow, Deputy Inspector General of Police, Gambia Police. Standing in for the Inspector General of Police, Mr. Abdullah Isanya, who unfortunately is out of town. But as I am talking to you, he's on airborne. Probably within the next hours, he should be within the source of this country. Having said that, uh, we put this gathering together for just one single purpose, that is through you, who has the platform to reach out to the general public, to the citizen of this country and non-citizen of this country, to ensure we put you ahead. But first and foremost, before I proceed, I want to extend my sincere condolences to the President of the Republic of the Gambia, Commander-in-Chief of the Gambia Arms and Security Services, the Minister of Interior, the Deputy Inspector, Gen uh, the Inspector General of Police, the Government of the Gambia, the people of the Gambia, friends of the Gambia, well wishers of the Gambia, the families of the fallen comrades, and all well wishers of this country, a heartfelt condolence and praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open his doors of mercy for our fallen comrades and also pray for the speedy recovery of one of our comrades who is still going through medical situations. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, best of he has strength back and give him a speedy recovery. On that note, I just want to give you a synopsis of the ugly incident of the 12th of September 2023, as purportedly reported by various platforms here present and not present. But I just want to share this word of caution. We did share information lines to the general public in respect of information and in assisting for the speedy and effective investigation. But I have noticed with this me that there are a lot of information going on the media and they are not helpful. I think the source and the direction of all those information 
should have been transmitted to the police or the police be informed in order to harvest those informations and eventually put them into perspective, put them into use to help the situation. But not only sitting in your own comfort zone, raising information that is unrefined. And some of you who work in the media fraternity would attest to this fact that information is very powerful and is very dangerous. In a sense, if it is not carefully checked, can lead into very, very serious situations. So having said that, we've lost two male police officers, private or police constable, Pate Jallo, and police constable Sangye Mendi. Gomez, police constable Sangye Mendi, uh, Sangye Gomez, WPC Ansi Jao, a brave, determined, gallant, and very illustrious WPC who is recovering from her predicament. And unfortunately, since the onset, up to today, this morning, there are report circulations in the social media that she has circumvent to her injuries, which is definitely uncalled for, definitely inhuman, and definitely far from the truth. I would like to tell you from this point where I'm standing now, she is out of danger and recovering well and responding to treatment as it is required to be. So being the case, this is why I have started with that part of telling us how information is dangerous and how information is powerful and how deadly information is. So if it is not gone to the real root, it might cause some complications. So having said that, I'll get into some of the synopsis of how the events has unfolded. There are other reports also that are circling within the media, which is unfounded, unrefined, unhealthy, and desire to smear and intimidate harass, or even to the extent of terrorizing the society, which are seriously unfunded. As far as we know, here is the truth, and this is the truth, and the whole truth. On that fateful day, we notice a significant amount of telephone traffic from the suspect and all, a lot of callers between the hours of 1900 or, six or 1800 to 2100 hours, a high volume of telephone traffic. All right? I want to uh, seize this indulgence also to apologize on behalf of us to the general public and to you, the media here. Because I will use agronomes here that are coded and probably is only those who are working in the security fraternity who can uncode those codes because they go along with them. They are done significantly, significantly for only one particular purpose, to protect present before and after security operations, as far as security situation is concerned. So like I said, I do apologize if you cannot unquote those quotes and you don't understand what they are. We can't present this presentation here without having mention of them. And uh, probably it could be very much tedious for other people to understand. But that's how our job goes on. Like I said, this telephone traffic was identified on the grid 
0284 whiskey echo 925 if you put this into context it gives you bruce v tone table that's a cell tower but it's coded as this and this figures it is only us who knows we do that to ensure that we protect our future operations and incoming operations this is where that significant amount of telephone traffic was going on as per the suspect's cell phone. Having said that, a few hours later, the same signals were picked up at grid 004 Sierra Zulu and close to latitude 1310. You put this also into perspective, it gives you between Sifo and Dimbaya. So moments later, the same signals were picked up at grid 35593 Eko Tango 0441 latitude 1355. That is the edge of the Gambian border into Kasamas. So that means from this point here, the suspect has been moving. And as a result of that, finally, his location was detected into the Senegalese territory, and that's where the telephone signals went dead. This is what we know, and it's a fact. Because grid references, most of us here, I think we have very few people who can measure grid references because they are coded internationally. They are used by militaries, security services across the globe. So, by 17 to 1800, we received the first signal of his presence in the direction of Sierra Yeli, or we say Sierra Yankee, at the Senegalese border. 10 to 15 kilometers approximation of the Gambia Casamas border, indicating a signal of somebody who is present there and who is most likely the suspect. The protocols were applied. Most of you here are aware that is there is a five kilometer radius hot pursuit between the two countries. I invoked that hospital through the Minister of Interior. I don't know where he has called, but before even, when the telephone comes, I put up an armada. Within 10 minutes, they were on the borderline of this 1355 grid reference, ready to enter. The protocols were worked on, and within 20 minutes, they were on site. Somebody, that we did not identify at the time was handed over to us purportedly purportedly being the suspect we did not confirm whether it was the suspect or not at the time but true to his own confessions we connected the dots and we suspected that is the very suspect that we are looking for so in that 30 hours now so far we have significant leads that direct a direction where he is totally implicated and the weapon use from his own mouth that he has been possessing a weapon for a very long time and indeed this said weapon was with him it was the Tuesday that that court sitting was in Banjul from his own mouth again the dress that he was identified with, that is the dress and boots that he has, he has led investigators to that domain and all of them are recovered. So on the nutshell, for now, this is much we can share with the general public to tell them that the investigation is on court and there are so many positive leads indicating to the suspect of being an accomplice or being the perpetrator of this horrendous crime. 
but these are just few among the lot that can be provided for now. We will continue updating the general public, the press, and everybody who lives within the territorial limits of this country. But a further plea, please, before you release any information as far as this saga is unfolding, come to us. We see it, we refine it with you, so that it can be a content that can be consumed. And let's put at the back of our mind, like I said, information is power. Information is dangerous and needs to be protected very jealously and very seriously, without which it can provoke situations beyond our control, and nobody foresees that. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Minister, National Security Advisor, DGSIS, Police Advisor, uh, Senior Police Command, and other services here present, I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. That was the Deputy Inspector General of Police, Momo Duso. I now have the honor to invite the National Security Advisor. No, no, police Advisor. You should have spoken to me. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just give it to the Minister. Uh, okay. Okay, okay, I'll just say it. No, 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 you will be super last. Okay. 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 I now have the honor to invite the National Security Advisor to brief this August gathering. أونس بالله من السيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون. The Honorable Minister of Justice, Minister of Interior, Honorable Siaka Sonko. The Director General of the State Intelligence Service, um, uh, Lamin Jadama, the uh, Police Advisor, Mr. Tamsir Jase, Senior Management of the Gambia Police Force, present here, um, personnel of the Office of National Security, uh, present here. Other state intelligence, state uh, security services present here. But most importantly, good afternoon to all the media houses present here at the Gambia Police Headquarters in Banjul. Your presence here today is important. And thank you for honoring our invitation for this press briefing. The press briefing is convened to provide situational update to the citizens and residents of this great country on the fatal shooting incident which occurred at the Sukuta Jabang traffic light on Tuesday, 12 September 2023. Regrettably, this unfortunate incident has claimed the lives of two police personnel, namely Police Constable Pate Jalo and Police Constable Sang J. Gomez, and critically um, injuring uh, woman Police Constable Anne Sijawo, who is currently admitted at the Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital and is recovering, as the DIG has indicated. I take this opportunity on behalf of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of the Gambia and Commander-in-Chief of the Gambia Armed Forces and the entire government and security institutions to convey sincere condolences to the families of the late Police Constable Pate Jalo and Police Constable Sangje Gomez and of course, we seen WPC and Sijao a speedy and full recovery from this tragic incident. We collectively pray that the Almighty Allah grant the departed souls 
paradise and grant the bereaved families the strength and fortitude to bear the irreparable loss. Amen. Admittedly, these are not only trying times for the bereaved families, but also represents a heavy loss to the entire nation, and in particular, security sector in the Gambia. But most importantly and profoundly, the institution where the two DCs belong to, the Gambia Police Force. As I mentioned earlier, we are deeply saddened by the shooting incident which is a terrific act, barbaric, cowardly, irreprehensible, criminal, and totally condemnable by all standards of humanity. Contextually, the Gambia Police Force and all other security and law enforcement agencies are responsible for the maintenance of law and order, thus guaranteeing peace and stability in the country. In the exercise of this sacred national duty, these officers face danger to their own lives and safety, and in this instance, they have paid the ultimate price with their own lives in carrying out this national duty for their country. I would like to applaud the remarkable leadership exhibited during this challenging period by His Excellency the President of the Republic of the Gambia and Commander-in-Chief of the Gambia Armed Forces. His leadership truly inspired the nation and demonstrated true statesmanship and steadfastness and devotion to his responsibility as head of state under the Constitution of the Republic of the Gambia. We salute him for his courage and the pronouncement he made in the aftermath of this tragic incident, particularly the assurances provided to the nation that the sanctity and the integrity of this country is uppermost and will be safeguarded at all costs. Additionally, the visit to the injured WPC Jao and the reward he pledged for information leading to the arrest of the perpetrators was inspiring and indeed remarkable. At this point, I would like to provide a brief update on the ongoing investigations being carried out by the multi-sectoral panel that was convened to investigate this unfortunate incident. It may be recalled that on Tuesday, 12 September 2023, three police intervention unit personnel of the Gambia Police Force, namely Police Constable Pate Jalo, Police Constable uh, Sangye Gomez, and W Police Constable Ansi Jao were shot by an unknown assailant at the Sukuta Javan traffic light between the hours of 9.30 to 10 p.m. The incident was reported by a taxi driver at Sukuta Police where he was provided an escort to the scene and the three injured personnel were immediately evacuated to the Sukuta Health Center, but subsequently referred to Nembad Clinic. Upon arrival at the Nembad Clinic, the two police constables, that is um, Patejalo and uh, Sangye Gomez, were pronounced dead, while W Police Constable Jao, who was in critical condition, was treated and transferred to Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital. A combined security and law enforcement manhunt was swiftly initiated for the capture of the assailant or assailants. A male civilian eyewitness in the exercise of his civic duty provided leads to the police and described a male person who he believed was involved who was a solitary figure, cladded in haftan, our traditional attire, and was wielding a pistol. Further investigators engaged witnesses who were believed to have been present at the scene and also scrutinized CCTV footages in the immediate vicinity and surrounding of the Sukuta Jabang traffic highlight.
uh, traffic light. A lead was provided to the on the sighting of a male individual in Jululung in the southern Senegal customers that fit the profile of the alleged suspect, which led to the arrest of one Gambian by the name of Useinu Bojang, who is a native of Burfoot and a security guard working for a local security company in the Gambia here. He was arrested on 13 August 2023, 13 September 2023 with the support of our Senegalese counterparts and subsequently extradited to the Gambia. Usainu Boyang is um, currently assisting the ongoing investigation, which has resulted in the arrest of um, others who are believed to be accomplices or aided and abetted the alleged suspect. So far as we speak, six persons of interest are in police custody, excluding the alleged suspect. The team of investigators are focused on establishing the possible motive of this dastly act, which was, whether it was a lone individual or a group. Further, the crime scene was well managed and team of investigators will be conducting crime scene reconstruction to further determine key circumstances surrounding the incident. At this material juncture, I would like to reiterate that the Gambia is a country governed by laws. And no one, and I repeat, no one has the right whatsoever to extrajudicially take the life of another person. Law enforcers, like civilians, have fundamental human rights and freedom guaranteed and protected by our sacred constitution. These rights, such as right to life, personal security and liberty, and protection against violence are sacrosanct and should not be, and should be upheld by all as guaranteed by the 1997 Constitution of the Republic of the Gambia. Concomitant with the above, I would like to further emphasize that the investigations are being conducted strictly, and I repeat, strictly, in observance of due process and human rights as provided in the Constitution and in, in line with international standards and best practices. We have a new founded democracy and the government should be commended for doing business in line with the Constitution and in line with um, the requirements and tenets of democracy. In this regard, we will ensure that maximum presumption of innocence is observed throughout the investigation process. By and large, the investigation would be impartial, professional, ethical, and would be conducted with strict adherence to the laws of the country. It is important to highlight that this incident is considered as a blatant attack to the peace and national security of the country. And no one, and I repeat again, no one will be left on, uh, no stone will be left unturned in bringing whoever is involved, regardless of status or affiliation. Justice will be served in this case. <coughs> in the wake of this unfortunate incident, the Gambia Police Force has intensified police patrols and community engagements to always reassure the public of their safety and security. Therefore, I equally call on the public to volunteer any information to the police that could enhance the ongoing investigations. The government applauds the media's role in disseminating accurate information and update, and further requests for the respect of the privacy of the victim's family during this very difficult period. This is a challenging time for the entire country, and we should all be mourning the unwarranted loss of life of these gallant security personnel. To conclude, this incident is unprecedented in the history of this country, and the government is resolved to ensure that it will never, and I repeat, never again happen in this country. And therefore, all the necessary measures will be put in place to avert such occurrence. I thank you all for your kind attention and will invite few questions. However, noting that investigations are ongoing 
and therefore we will not be able to provide detailed and sensitive information that may likely interfere with the investigations. I thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much, the National Security Advisor. I now have the honor to invite the Minister of Interior. Minister, please. Assalamu alaikum. I greet you in peace. Um, I, by extension, greet the support staff from the police, from the DIG, by extension, the IGP who is on the way back. The other services here present and uh, our friends, the media. I always say this, our friends, the media, we cannot be anybody to you, anything else to you but friends. Before joining service or taking up appointments, we, we are from the general public, and that's where we go back to. We promise to serve this nation and make sure that it is safe for everybody. Whilst others sleep, our young service personnel go out at night. When there was a huge traffic problem around the, the traffic light through Kuta Java, it was felt necessary that they should be beefed up with extra security so that traffic can flow smoothly. These are considerations among many that the police undertake. There is no specific targeting of individuals. When duty calls, routine police procedures take place and should be taken just in that light, not as a consideration of targeting individuals. I, I cannot run away from this. It sickens me to read or to listen to audios where people were laughing about the, the loss of life and even claiming that more should, be, should have been done threatening very nastily against people who are out to protect you. They protect all of us. But we seen harm to this country, like uh, CDS Drame said, it's not helpful. If there's a breakdown of law and order in this country, no one wins. Not the security, not the civilians, not the administrators. We all lose. It should be our responsibility to preserve the peace that we inherited from our ancestors, our parents. We gladly call Saudada Kairaba, not because of the name, but during this time there was a lot of peace. Some time ago, another head of state decided I was not going to go. I'm not going to be derisive, but it's a fact. Many of our parents left, including mine, my relatives fled across the country because they felt it was not safe. Can we jealously guard this peace that we all have? It behoves all of us to protect each other. I'll go further to say this. Whilst a serious case like this happening, I noticed that a plethora of interviews, people going everywhere. Yes, you have a right to get information. That is what was guaranteed. But can you please turn it down? Because sometimes you go to certain areas, the sort of uh, engagements that are, are made creates doubts or even causes more problems. A police investigation of this nature requires that they are not distracted when they are doing their duty. Um, we know you have a job to do. There's a freedom of information in this country. But if this is abuse, it affects all of us. Sometimes when crises happen, the worst affected are the civilians. Because the services, they have training, they can do certain things to be able to defend, protect themselves. But really, our brothers and sisters out there, they need the, the, the support of the services. Can we please, can we please show some love to the servicemen? I want to um, express my sincere condolences to the families of these young serving members of the police force whose lives were quite short. I would also like to commend 
the leadership of His Excellency, uh, President Arundo. When I was informed by the Minister of Defense that this, has, this happened around the Sukuta traffic light, like many, I said, no, it cannot happen. But I rushed to the scene, and there I was joined by many other services, their chiefs, to assist in the investigation. I noticed at the scene, so many people who had nothing to do with it, milling around, and it is very dangerous. My warning, my advice, I don't know everything, but we have experienced some. Please, an incident where danger locks, please, civilians and others who have nothing to do, please walk away. If you have information, share it. There's no need to jump onto the scene. You are not adding any value. Instead, you are creating problems. It is very dangerous. I remember there was an incident where a young girl apparently died from some alleged malpractice in the house. Even before the police arrived on the scene, civilians jumped on the scene. You tamper with everything that the police could have to deal with the case. If the case is unresolved, you turn around and say, the police are ineffective. Whenever incidents happen, certain things are left on the spot that the police can pick up to assist them in their investigations. Going onto the scene just because you have a, a mobile phone, picking up uh, shots and trying to be very active. As, uh, I'm not talking about the journalist, you are professional, but sometimes it happens with you too. Try to be as professional as possible. Ask for advice as to how you can approach wherever you are going. And then, you know, you assist. But any other way is not helpful, it's obstructive. I, I, I just want to uh, con uh, congratulate the, the president for the leadership that he undertook to lead us in these trying times, mm -hmm. trying to show us the way. Visited the hospital to see the injured uh, police woman and also went to the mortuary to pay our last respects to the two uh, officers. We are going to the funeral of one of them. Um, it's, a, it's going to be a very somber ceremony. We are very sad to go, but we have to go to show our respects to our colleagues. We'll be going there very soon. And uh, uh, just like the DIG said, you'll be invited and the the National Security Advisor said, we'll be inviting you once in a while to give you updates. In the meantime, could we try to exercise some restraint? Try not to be going into areas that you'll be asking questions, probing into areas that can even uh, tamper with the, the, the investigation. Please, we ask this respectfully. We appreciate you, but there are certain things that if you do, will not help. On that note, I thank you all for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister, and thank you very much for the earlier speakers. Um, we are about to conclude uh, this session, and before we do that, we want to invite a few questions, no more than five questions, because the high members here would be part of the uh, team to go and attend the burial uh, of one of the, the, the fallen officer. Thank you. Um, if you have a question, raise your hand. You can raise your hand. We see five questions, and then that's it. One, two, three, four. OK. Then let me start with on my right. You come here, ask the question, and they can respond. Because they might start. Good OK. Good afternoon, everyone. My question goes to the Deputy Inspector General of Police, Momodu Sol. Um, in your deliberation, as giving us synopsis of updates, you mentioned about the recovery of a weapon from the principal suspect. Can you go into details about what sort of weapon is this? Thank you. I thought I think you are not within the podium here. There was no recovery of a weapon mentioned by me. We said he was in a position of a weapon prior to this long time ago. So listen carefully. I didn't mention of any recovery. Thank you. Yes. On my right? Yes. 
Thank you very much. Uh, this is Keba Ansumani for the Al Kamba Times. Uh, my question is to the National Security uh, Advisor, who earlier mentioned that uh, six people were arrested you know, in connection to the case. We would like to know the names of these people and whether they have any connection with this servicemen. The other question is we understand the, the, the suspect used a uh, mark uh, pistol. We would like to know how the, t the suspect managed to get this mark, mark pistol. Thank you very much. Thank you for your question. Um, as I have indicated um, during my briefing, other than the um, suspect, um, Usainu Bojang, there are other six, but um, I will not um, mention their names here. Um, but what I can also indicate to you is that um, as far as uh, the information we have uh, from the investigators, None of them are associated with um, um, any of the um, security institutions at the moment. This I can um, uh, highlight to you, that yes, other than Usainu Bojang, there are other six, but um, for sensitivity and uh, the nature of the investigation that is um, unfolding, uh, I am not at liberty to give you names, but I can also tell you that um, at the moment, none of them are known to be part of um, uh, the security services. The um, second aspect of your question was... Um, we understand the suspect used Yes. Pistol. Yeah. How did the, the, the suspect get to have or to have that pistol? No, I, I can take it. I can take it. I am not aware where it was indicated um, in the reports that was available to me that there was a specific description of the weapon. What we know is that it is a pistol, it's a firearm. What we also know um, is that the suspect have indicated to us that he acquired the weapon in Casamas. The suspect have also indicated to us that he has not served in any of the security institution but was a member of the rebel group in Casamas. That I can tell you. The weapon is not from any of our inventory as far as our um, uh, arms and ammunition are concerned, but he has indicated to us that he was a member of the rebels and he has fought in the Casamas um, insurgency and this is where he acquired the weapon. And unless we lay hand on that weapon, which we are doing our best to do so, we will be able to um, uh, give further information as it relates to that. I hope that answers your question. Just, just a rejoinder. I, I think I have made this point in my statement, that be careful of the sideline information that you have. Before you release it, confirm with us. No, you didn't. Because it's not supposed to be part of the press briefings. Because we don't have that information. You did not confirm your information of a map. Where, where do you get that map? Not any in any of the reports. So please, yeah, 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 ladies and gentlemen, be very careful of that. Okay? Please. That's the second. That's the third. I'm, on, I'm going this way. Yes, come. Okay, you can start from there. Yeah, yeah. Um, my first question is, uh, are there any connections between the victim and the and the second question is um, after this. Oh, sorry. Can you provide the timeline for the investigation and the legal proceedings? And the third question will be. This um, one, please. This one. This one. Okay, yeah, first one. Yeah. As far as the preliminary reports, um, as it relates to the investigation, is concerned, we are not aware of any affiliation or relationship between the accused and the victims. I think that was your question. We are not aware of um, their familiarity. Um, what we knew is that um, he happened to find them at the spot where they were and then carry out his nefarious activity uh, indiscriminately. But we are not aware of um, 
their previous engagement, uh, familiarity, or, or acquaintances. Um, it was just an unfortunate incident, and they were uh, uh, victims um, who were at a spot where you know somebody was out to do no good, and they, they became um, uh, casualties of that. What was the second side? Timeline for the investigations, we cannot give you that. It will be dictated by um, events. Um, this is not um, this is not necessarily um, an event in itself, but it's a process. Um, and in order to ensure that there will be no repeat of this, in order to ensure also that uh, we got to the bottom of this. Whatever time it requires, but of course time of the essence, uh, investigations will, um, will um, continue until we are satisfied with um, what we are um, uh, after, which is um, establishing everything that is related and associated with this um, um, unfortunate and tragic incident. Thank you. We'll now have the last question. No, no. no support what I'm looking for. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so for me, like, I'll take from the statement of the National Security Advisor. During the uh, coup at a, you promised that you were updating or you never did. So here too you are promising us. I want to know how to, or how will you do that? But my question is, um, you are talking about timeline. You open it. And the Constitution is saying 72 hours. How are you going to... Um, are you going to respect their rights? You are confusing two sides. And, and then, and then, the, and then the, the, the government spokesperson linked this incident as a terrorist attack. And I did not hear any one of you talking about that. Was he talking to the media like to make the case, or is it something that is terrorist attack? Thank you very much. Um, uh, thank you for that question. Um, classification of, an, of a crime as a terrorist attack is the prerogative of the state. We have classified it as terrorist. But um, yes, and you 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 wanted assurance that we be given press statement. In in many respects when the when the promise is made, it's made in good faith. We will we will engage. We promise to engage. But for now we just want to create the indulgence because the Belief family is waiting out in Fony, we are going there. Uh, the funeral is taking place. I think it's called Campasa. We want to go, and uh, it's a long way to go. The traffic and everything. So we want to thank you for coming. Uh, Do you want to take my question? Please, we don't have time. It's, it's a short question. Please, we don't have time. We, we have to. Uh, please, yes. Yes, we just close. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for for coming. And this is just the beginning, and many would be coming on your way before the end of this year. This week. Thank you. Thank you.